Now, as all good Dying Light videos start, there's a survivor out in the middle of buttfuck nowhere that has found himself in a predicament. So like the good bloke that I am, I drop kick that cunt into oblivion and then make a run for it. There's no need to thank me, good sir. I've got a lifetime supply of money and bitches. But somehow, fuckface McGee still manages to die. R.I.P. my boy. What's up you cretins, it's Cobb, and welcome back to at least the 8th video of Dying Light. In this episode, we're going to be helping Tolga and Fatin again, helping some random bloke find his glasses, and making our way to Sector Zero. Let's get into it. After kindly saving the survivor, I make my way to Haran's most hated, big-headed, no-hose, troglodyte-looking, violently autistic twins, and they need... Duct tape! Cables! Duct tape! Cables! Duct tape! Look, I get it. You need both. And luckily for them, I've got 10 rolls of duct tape and 10 power cables in my man purse. Right next to my assault rifle and your mum's favourite butt plug. But now, they have another task for me. I have to get across the bridge to acquire a sonar unit. They've set up a zip line across the bridge and know that it's there. So I don't know why these two funny looking fellas couldn't have just grabbed it themselves. Absolute cavemen brains. So, I head on up to the bridge and kick this lady's thigh so hard her head turns into something I'd pay $45 for at the local steakhouse. I head to the edge of the bridge and try and grapple across and to my surprise, the game doesn't allow me. So how the fuck do I get across? I run back and try to climb up the bridge cable supports and ultimately fall to my death. It's not ideal, but it's okay. Crane's body is made out of adamantium, so I get back up and look for another way up. Using my massive brain, I see a ledge and try to grapple up to it, ultimately dying again. Third time's the charm, right? I head back up and try to grapple up again, and this time, I succeed. But now where the fuck do I go? I look around and then try to game in myself, but I can't even do that. So I find this joint and think to myself that this might be the right way to go up to the top. I was wrong and end up dying again. Now look, Tolga and Fatine may not be the most desirable of people to be around, but maybe they have a reason to insult my intelligence. I've got about as many brain cells as you've got bitches, and we all know that equals to zero. I head on back up to the bridge and peacefully watch as all these zombies fall off the edge. You'd think zombies would realise that they have opposable thumbs and just climb up onto the bus. But on the opposite side of the coin, I should have just realised that I have opposable thumbs and tried to climb up the bridge. Which is what I realised after a quick Google search. I end up at the top after only nearly dying 8 times and find a cool little blueprint which I'm never going to use, and more importantly, the zipline. I make my way down, and there's at least three zombies here. But as I've explained before, I've got 9mm of American freedom power right under my fingertips, and the ability to climb anything I'm fucking looking at. So nothing scares me anymore. I find the sonar unit, and now Kumquat 1 and Kumquat 2 don't even need it. A rage fills me, and I decide that I'm going to unleash it out on this random zombie, who did absolutely nothing wrong, with the newly crowned best dropkick of the series. I do the world's largest dive, and then zip line to these guys, who aren't impressed with my defiance of the laws of physics. I'm here looking for Tolga and Fatine, to give them a firm headbutt and watch as their souls leave their bodies. They aren't here, lucky for them. So now I've got to find another quest to do, so I head for Brecken, and I end up grappling my balls onto this trader's forehead. Sorry mate. So I offer him 15 assault rifles as compensation. I look around, and there's absolutely zero quests here, but I find a dude smoking a yummy looking dart and decide to try and intimidate him for a puff by staring at him with my unblinking eyes, but he just stares back and aggressively has a drag while peering into the corners of my soul. Feeling intimidated, I leave to find another quest. There's another village close by, so I head to that and find this spooky lady living in a shack, and she obviously let a toddler draw on her walls. She tells me she needs me to find some magic mushies in some caves at night. I let her know my thoughts, because I'm definitely not fucking doing that. The night missions cause me more anxiety than when my mum calls me by my full name. So I head for the tower, and notice that I haven't touched the bulletin board, 
I grab a mission from there and head to talk to Khalid, who has the best moustache I've ever seen. Good on you, mate. He tells me he wants his glasses and a book to start a vegetable garden on top of the tower. Now, I'm not going to be the one who tells old mate that the Ministry of Defence is going to blow the joint in about 15 hours, but Crane will do absolutely anything for some extra cash. And buy anything. I mean anything. So I head for Khalid. <laughs> so I head for <laughs> So I head for Khalid's place and find his glasses with no worries. So I head downstairs to find the book, and luckily for me, the game thinks I'm eight years old, so it holds my hand everywhere I go. So I find it incredibly quickly. I also find a book for Wet Dream, the first romance novel for plumbers, good god. Now I'm not one to judge Khalid, but you got to lock up your homoerotica tight so that no one finds it, mate. You're lucky I found it, not Steve, the 54-year-old bald white bloke who can't seem to get out of the 70s. I hand him back his glasses and decide it's time for Sector Zero. So I meet this random dude at his house and he doesn't really seem too friendly, but I tell him that I've got a voucher for Robux for him and then he happily obliges. So he calls up his butt buddies and tells them I'm coming with $6 worth of Robux and he tells us to head for the sewers. I oblige, and on the way there, I kick this chick's head like a football, and it pops like a watermelon under a hydraulic press. So, after that traumatic experience, I find the bloke <coughs> who starts showing me around when I see an opportunity to jump into some shit water, and I take it gleefully. This is what a real man looks like, fellas. Take notes. I find a group of people sitting around, and to everyone's surprise, Dawood is here. And what he says will shock absolutely anyone, the hardest individuals you could find. It does not matter to their core. Like and subscribe to the Cobb YouTube channel motherfuckers you dumb cunts need to stop what you are doing and subscribe to me so I can finally make some money on this stupid fucking app goddamn pieces of shit. I am about to have a fucking nervous meltdown my life is in shambles and I can't stop crying myself to sleep. Please subscribe so I can pay for a therapist and maybe my wife and children can finally eat dinner for at least one week hung ah ha 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 a ung unga bunga fuck I think I just came oh my god it's everywhere. With that little fella sitting back down, I dive head first into the poop water like a three year old when it's bath time and I find an alleyway full of zombies. With my big nuts in hand, I clear them out with ease and notice there's one left standing around. Unluckily for her, I'm not feeling merciful. And she's about to feel the full fury of these big bag thighs of mine as I send her across the stratosphere and she becomes an astronaut for about three seconds. I make my way through and it turns out the saviour sold us out to rise. Absolute fucking dogs. So now we have a gunfire on our hands. After swimming through about 15 tons worth of stinky poopy water and dodging bullets, I find myself fighting Rice's men. And just like every other time I found myself fighting these blokes, I reckon a lizard with no legs or tail would be more efficient at shooting at me accurately. I clear through them with ease. And I find myself in Sector Zero. A cute little town that I'd love to buy property in with my copious amounts of bitches. We get a call from Dr. Camden and he explains he's in a shit spot, so we decide to head to Troy to help us look for Jade. In the next episode, that is. Thanks for watching, you legends. Make sure to like, comment what you enjoyed, and subscribe for more content from yours truly. Until next time, take care.